things that uh, always interested me about comics and cartoons when I was your guys' age was some of the like different symbols and um, almost like like a special vocabulary, a special language that cartoonists have. For example, stand up, young lady, stand up, and stand with your back to the board. So think like a cartoonist, you guys. <laughs> That's something that cartoonists do to show. It's a symbol they came up with to show in a very simple way that someone just got a great idea. Yes. Okay, now, I just have to tell her something. Okay, think like a cartoonist again. What's happening? She's asleep, she's asleep. Another very simple way the cartoons came up with to show something. So that's one of the things that I really love uh, about comics from the start. And that I still love about comics. Okay, hon, you can sit back down. Thank you. And that's what I still love about comics is that there are some very simple ways to tell a story, whether you're telling just like a short little comic strip or whether you're telling a much longer story in comics. I just love all those sort of different symbols. So. Uh, we're going to learn about a couple of those symbols <coughs> now. So in this book, the star of this book is a guy who's a little bit older than you guys. He's a sixth grader. His name is Nate. Big Nate. And it's good that the word big is in front of his name because that sort of reflects how he thinks about himself. He thinks he's destined for big things, thinks he's destined for greatness. And in the book, which follows him through the course of just one day, he sort of thinks that great things are going to happen. He tries to make great things happen. It doesn't work out quite the way that he thought it would, but he figures out a way to turn a lot of negatives into positives by the end, because that's the sort of character he is. So I've been drawing him for a long time. Long before I wrote this book, I've been drawing this character because he's been in a comic strip for the past 20 years. So I've been drawing him a long time. You guys are about to draw him for the very first time. So draw along with me. Let's see how we do. I start every time with an oval. And when you think about it, comics are really simpler versions of things we see in real life. So in real life, when we look at a nose, there are a lot of details, you know, nostrils and little the little curve there. And, but in comics, the way I draw Big Nate's nose, I just draw another oval. Simple. I like, I like to keep it simple. I realized when I was about your <coughs> guy's age that, that drawing things to look really super realistic was not something I was very good at. So that's another reason I got very interested in comics. OK, now this line is going to be the front of his head. He's looking this way. And this line, which I'm going to make a little darker, loops back here to where Big Nate's ear is. So again. A real ear is a lot more complicated than Big Nate's ear. But we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about all those details. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing here. Now, the funnest part of drawing Nate is his hair. One, two, three spikes sort of go off that way. There's a little one that sort of sticks straight up in the middle. And then one, two, three more go down that way. And when I think of Nate's hair, I think of Really, the two things about comics that I always try to mention when I come into schools, one I've already talked about is how comics are sort of simpler versions of things that we see in real life. And Nate's hair is pretty simple to draw. It's just these sort of rounded off triangles <coughs> colored in. So that's a lot simpler than drawing real hair. And his hair is also very exaggerated. It's sort of wilder and spikier and sort of more stand-up-y than hair that you would probably see in real life. So, speaking of simple, have you ever tried to draw a real eye? Yeah. Yeah. That is very hard to do, don't you yeah. think? Because there's eyelids, there's eyelashes, there's a lot of details. Thank goodness we don't have to deal with that. <coughs> Nate's, eyes, Nate's eyes are just two vertical lines. 
And he's a happy kid, so I'm going to give him a big happy mouth right here. And this is a little sloppier version of how I would normally draw a big Nate if I were trying to draw him very carefully, like for the cover of the book. But you guys can handle a little bit sloppy, right? We don't mind sloppiness. <coughs> Most kids don't mind a little sloppiness every now and again. And now I'm just going to give him a couple of eyebrows. Okay. So that was not all that tough. <laughs> but now I have to ask you a, a question, since you guys are uh, our cartoonists. Don't you think that a drawing like this, which is really just sort of a combination of a lot of very simple shapes and lines, doesn't it make sense that if I just changed a couple of lines that I could really change the drawing pretty significantly? Yes. So I'm going to change the two tiniest lines in the drawing. And all I did was change the direction of his eyebrows, and I completely changed Nate from a friendly, happy kid. Now he's sort of like a villain. He's like Nate's, uh, he's like Nate's evil twin now. So, so, why is that important? It's important because as a cartoonist, I'm, uh, I'm a storyteller. I tell stories with a combination of pictures, but also words. So when I'm concentrating on the pictures part, which is what we're doing now, well, the direction of a line, whether it's thick or thin, whether it's curved or straight, all those things can be very uh, meaningful in terms of how they affect my story, the story I'm trying to tell. So we are about to tell a very simple story. So find a fresh, find a fresh part on your paper or flip your paper over or something. And we will tell a simple story.